Hey guys, it's the beginning of June and I'm out in the greenhouse. We've actually had some overcast days recently and kind of highs in the 60s, maybe even 50s. Um, fairly rare for this part of Oregon, but we have actually had some rain, so that's been great. So here's a dill about to go to flower. So it's part of the umbilate family, and so you can see it has this kind of umbrella shape to the flower, and each one is kind of a fractal pattern of that. And then here's a close relative, cilantro, coriander. And so, um, this carrot family is great for attracting beneficial insects because um, you can see how small the flowers actually are. And so it takes a really small insect with small mouth parts to access that. And uh, often they tend to be kind of predatory insects. And just good to have a diversity of different size flowers from something tiny as that to, you know, a large squash flower. It's, these are male flowers. A female would have a little ovum, like a little proto squash down here. And you can see what I've done actually here is fed the squash, which was a volunteer that started here. And now it's growing outside. <laughs> So the potatoes are going to come out here shortly. Um, I kind of need the space and you can see that they're ready for harvest. Looking real nice. Another one. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch in there. And you can see the, um, the foliage, some of it is still doing quite well but the bottom parts are starting to kind of die off naturally. So that's a sign that it's pretty much ready for harvest. Here's some uh, wheat that the chickens planted. Looks like a modern variety. By how short it is, it's only like <laughs> two feet tall. <laughs> and uh, has this absurd ear. Look at all those seeds. It's crazy. So uh, the tomatoes have been strung up to the wire here. And we'll be growing these single, single stem for a while. So basically pinching out all the secondary growths like this guy. Well, that's a leaf actually, but it looks like that. And uh, yeah, you can see actually quite short internodal spacing between flowers. So this variety will do well. This is the Japanese black trifle. I can only pick this one out because it's the only potato leafed one. And by the way, if you're doing this with tomatoes, growing them um, like single cordon like this, um, either pick an indeterminate variety, which pretty much all of mine are, I think at this point, the older heirloom varieties tend to be. Or if you want to do it with a determinative variety, you can still do it, but what you have to do is always save a couple of backup secondary growths near the top, because the determinative varieties will kind of top themselves. They'll terminate automatically after they set a certain number of uh, flower sets or nodes. And so what you have to do there is before it terminates is save one of the upper nodes and then restart the growth from that and then that will terminate and then you do it again and you're getting a kind of cool uh, trimming exercise there. So here's the sherbet that we've grown in the winter and spring. Uh, it was planted on the 19th of February. And uh, this one's been revegging a little bit slowly, 
but it's still doing all right. And as I mentioned before in the other videos, it's the lower shoots that are actually better for revegging, not the top ones that tend to kind of stay in this curly Q stage for longer. And so if you kind of look right here, use this as an example. So we have this branch here. You can kind of see where the little nug kind of started to explode out. And um, if you look, the top is still kind of calyxy. And that's going to be a while before that starts to reveg. But one node down, you can see this growth is pretty much ready to grow. So what I would do is come in here and remove this top part. So get rid of that. Dry it out for extract if you want, I guess. And then basically strip everything else. And you can see this branch down here. Take that off. You start to get really woody on the inside during this re-veg stage, so not as easy to snap off. Um, so this one would still have a while to go before that would revert. But it would eventually. But basically what we're going to do is lighten it much as we can by removing everything except for that vigorous growth we have at the top. Like all this stuff would eventually reshoot. And so this is one of those cases that some drastic trimming is the best thing you can do for the plant and is the fastest growth stimulant. So kind of did a rough job there but uh, you get the idea. And I also saved one of the main branches that flowered. All the other ones were chopped off, like you can see that stump there. This one was bent over and it broke, but it's already formed a really solid trunk underneath. I've been kind of carving away the old wood there. And this is a graft, by the way, but I don't remember what it is, because I didn't mark it for some reason. And you can see that this growth here is still pretty much in the flowering stage hasn't progressed much except for this one branch here. This is doing really well. In fact, it already has a three. And probably some fives. Yeah, I can see it. the next one up here is actually a five. So again, you could select for this and just trim everything else out or leave a couple more to split it down here a little bit lower. It's resting on a cabbage right now. <laughs> Man, that is the craziest color of green. Very saturated. All right, so here we have our uh, Cabbage ready for harvest. Whew, that thing is dense, rock solid. Look at this thing, it's a beauty. Man, look at these leaves. Let's see if I can take one off here. It's a good size one, but what about this one here? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty cool. Heard a five gallon bucket here. So yeah, they'll be ready to take as well. Probably cook a soup out of all this stuff here soon. Make some sauerkraut out of this. Definitely a couple meals in there. And um you can see how well this Oregon lemon has been doing. Well. Uh, and the sherbet's a bit behind. It started to flower a bit later and took its time, so there's just some genetic variation there. I'm trying to figure out what this is. Um, but yeah, you can already see a bunch of fives. 
tons of fives. So this one's already vegging. We can kind of officially claim this one as reverted into vegetative state. You can see we have a ton of really healthy shoots to choose from and to start to spread out. So a cage will be going on here soon and it'll be spread out like that into a kind of tabletop shape, keeping it low so it's easier to work on just sitting down on a chair. And this one, again, I didn't label any of this stuff, uh, but by the leaf it looks like a cauliflower to me. And it's starting to kind of head up in there as well, kind of get a little flower cluster. Okay, more tomatoes, pepper, eggplant. Uh, so here's those watermelon volunteers growing really well and we trim those uh, into a single stem as well but I'll get into that in a different video. So again this elephant uh, cutting with a bunch of the different grafts on it hasn't been doing nearly as well as the lemon sour diesel but I don't know, something's been munching on it too. Slugs or wood lice, maybe. They can sense that it's a weak plant and it's an easy digestible meal for them. Um, yeah, I don't know, I might have to call it quits with this one. But it'll still be interesting to grow them out. And you can see how well this uh, lemon sour diesel with all of its grafts is doing here. And again, here's the elephant um, graft union with the rootstock is down here. And all of this above here is the elephant that started as a little cutting like this from that plant there. You can see how much larger that is than its original plant. Just shows you that the roots are everything. As you saw in the previous video, that elephant over there had a, you know, much weaker looking root system. I'm not sure why they were under the same conditions, but it's dispensary clone, so who knows. Uh, and when we took that and took it off of the weaker root system and put it on the stronger root system, it just exploded. This whole plant is doing really well. So here we have the Fire OG, Gorilla Glue. So I left this one uh, not trained down because I think I might graft into it actually here in a bit. The weather might be cool enough to make that happen or I might take it as cutting. I was thinking uh, these outdoor grows would be a great way to just grow up some really vigorous cuttings to clone to try in that uh, bubble cloner I made recently. So I think that's what we might do with this uh, shoot of elephant here. Um, and then the three leaf stuff is the lemon sour diesel rootstock itself. There's a bunch of it here. And then, uh, see down here are the more, most recent grafts. So, this one is the jelly bean. And by the way, this plant is doing really poorly indoors, so this is basically saving this cut for me is putting on this putting grafting it onto this vigorous growth but you can see it is kind of struggling a bit to catch up but I think it'll do fine especially when we take this out and then uh, Jack Hare and let's see there's one more somewhere here it's starting to get jumbled up oh yeah down here it's the Jack Hare and this one that's doing really well is Sweet lemon. This guy here. All right, so um, let's see. More tomatoes and stuff here. The potatoes are doing well. In fact, I thought I saw. Yeah, you see this here? This is the um, runner that the rhizome, the tuber, forms at the end of from the potato. 
So this is most likely coming from one of these two. And you can see how far it travels when it has this loose mulch to go in. And if we go carefully, yep, there it is. That will be our potato. So, you can just cover that up so it doesn't get sunlight. And we got our large pile of compost here. It's been grown in situ as mulch. Alright guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.